All right, welcome to NRA Show 2016 in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm Ryan Bachad with Handgun Radio. I'm here with Grant Cunningham, and we're at the Nighthawk Custom Booth. They are distributing the Korth revolvers here in the United States. So, Grant, how you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Doing really good. So, uh, tell us a little bit about these guns, because not a lot of people, that people hear about them, they hear that they're Rolls-Royce of revolvers, but not a lot of people have gotten hands on them. So, what's the story with the Nighthawk partnership and with the guns that are going to be coming out? Well, you know, uh, Korth revolvers have been made in Germany for many years now, and, and in fact, you said not a lot of people ever gotten their hands on them. I've only ever handled a couple myself in 20 or 30 years. So these are being brought into the country now by Nighthawk, so they've got you know, distributor support and parts and all that kind of stuff that you need to have if you've got guns coming into the country. Uh, the Korth revolvers are well known for being incredibly well built, uh, incredibly adjustable and incredibly accurate guns, and they are. You can adjust the actions on these five ways. You can adjust mainspring weight, you can adjust rebound weight, you can adjust over travel, you can adjust let off in double action, you can adjust let off in single action. So you can tune this gun user adjustable. I mean, this is right, You're not, uh, not something you have to send to a gunsmith for. You can adjust this to whatever you want uh, and get the trigger that you want out of it, and they are smooth. There, you can adjust them as light as you want, as heavy as you want, and they're still smooth as glass because they use a uh, roller bearing action in 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 double action, so they're just smooth as silk. So I see um, you have a, a cylinder latch that's in a little bit of a different position than you would see on some other revolvers, um, but it looks this looks sort of like a K frame size, right? Right about. It's right about L frame size, actually. In fact, it uses L frame grips. So if you've got standard L frame, in fact, that's why they've got hoe grips on them, so we can show people, yeah, these things use L frame grips. So any nice L frame grip, round butt, of course, that you want to put on it. We've got conversion to square butt grips on this one, on this three inch. Uh, but you can put any L frame grip you want on it. Uh, in terms of size, it's uh, it's actually a little a little more svelte. Than, than the L-frame, it's a little narrow, it just seems a little lighter. Cylinder uses standard L-frame speed loaders. The, uh, the trigger pull is something that I was really astounded by. I mean, they are just, it's phenomenal. You got a um, sort of a modified gold bead front sight here. It's a little bit longer. It's sort of shaped like a, like a capsule or something. And um, also their conversion cylinders, because I know Korth is known for being able to shoot your regular revolver cartridges as well as auto cartridges. Exactly. You know, in Germany, the nine millimeters, I mean, that's a standard cartridge in Germany, right? You know? And so they do. They have re, uh, re, replacement cylinders, interchangeable cylinders. And what we've got here is we've got a little button here on the side of the gun. And all we have to do is open up the cylinder like that, press in the little button, pull out the old cylinder. I feel that this is like, you know, like that movie with um, Clint Eastwood, you know, where he's changing the cylinders and walking down the street. Right? Same thing. So anyway, so we put the 9mm cylinder in like this. And we put that in now. We've converted the gun to 9mm. No moon clips. The, uh, the cylinder has uh, little things that come out to grab the rim of the cartridge and inject the, the, the spent brass. Uh, so no movement clips required for 9mm. And there you have, you now have a 9mm gun. The chambers look, um, are on the other cylinder, are the chambers any countersinking or anything like that? Or it looks like there's a slight chamfer yeah, on the, the, on the uh, cylinder. On the 9mm the there is. On the 38 357, it's not quite as pronounced, but there is a chamfer there. And that was mainly just to make sure they go in there smoothly. Exactly. You know, smooth the reloads because uh, if you've got just a flat edge there, and it, even like if you're shooting round nose ammo, it still will catch on the edge of the of the uh, of the case and sometimes slow up your reload. So they chamfered these things. The nine millimeters chamfered a little more. They felt it was necessary to get really smooth uh, yeah. insertion with the nine millimeter rounds. So they chamfered a little more. They really, really are looking great, and then they have, and these aren't, this isn't the only model they have. They have, uh, there's multiple ones over there on the table we'll show you on the video. Um, they have the, the smaller version, which the, the snub nose one, the little 9mm there, what are they calling it? The, uh, it's the, uh, the Skyhawk, and it's 9mm only. It's got a tiny little 9mm cylinder. Same idea as this, by the way, no moon clips. Uh, aluminum framed as opposed to the steel frame, right, that the, uh, the standard guns are in. Uh, and it's, a little, it's smaller overall. Uh, two-inch barrel instead of three three and up. 
I know Weird was talking. We were uh, talking earlier how we always like to see these revolvers in auto calibers, but they always use the cylinders for. I'm sure for ease of manufacturing and and stuff like that. They always use the cylinders that are long enough for a, a revolver cartridge. When you got this short, stubby little round, or they'll take and put this crazy long uh, forcing cone in the cylinder window. This one has a, a cylinder that's size four nine millimeters. Exactly, and, and you know it reminds me a little bit uh, when you look at pictures of the. The old Smith & Wesson, like the number ones in 22 short, you know, they got that little short cylinder. That's what it reminds me of because it, we're used to cylinders that are this long, right, 38, 357, and it's, you know, like half the length. So it, it looks a little odd, but it saves weight. It saves size because that means the frame doesn't have to be as long. Um, so it, it's a good engineering choice if you're doing a dedicated 9mm gun. Now I see that there's also like a PPC style gun over there with uh, rails on the top, and um, uh, what's the story on that one? Just a competition piece, or? Yeah, that's their competition model. They they realize that there are a lot of people who shoot competition revolvers these days, and actually it seems to be increasing a little bit. So for those people that shoot PPC and, and maybe shoot NRA action pistol, Bianchi Cup, they made that gun. So it's got rails on it, so you can put optics on it. You can put barricade wings on it. Of course, that's important in Bianchi Cup. Um, of course, the standard adjustable action so that they can adjust it exactly as they want. And then it has a, uh, very similar to an aristocrat rib. So it's got the four position front sight so you can adjust it for the different stage lengths. And what they've done that's really cool is that they've got an, uh, the rear sight, the rear sight blade, the notch width, the width of the rear sight notch is adjustable. So, you know, if, if you feel you need, you know, more light, you know, like you can, like, sometimes, especially when I was competing, if there was a difference between uh, a cloudy day and a sunny day, and I kind of felt like I needed different rear sight blade widths, you know, to compensate for that. Well, now, with that gun, you can just turn, turn the little tool, change your, your notch width, it remains at zero, and you go out and shoot. Excellent. And uh, any idea on availability, um, MSRPs, or be, have they already established those? Yeah, uh, the prices have been established. MSRP, like, now this is the 3-inch, standard 3-inch gun, and 38357 is uh, right around 3500 3599 something like that. It varies just a little bit with barrel length, because there are 3, 4, and 6-inch barrels. So, right around there, uh, if you want... The double cylinder, nine millimeter and three fifty seven, it goes up to about forty five, and then the uh, competition model is higher. It's uh, I think it starts at about forty seven, something like that. And for people who are, you know, obviously you're going to have people who are going to say that's just that that's a crazy amount of money. But you got to remember, like we like we've talked about, if people that people are oh I want a Colt Python and I want this, and they got to remember that you know that all that hand fitting, all that really intense, it's not a mass produce you know, get get 500 guns out today. It, it doesn't work that way. These guns are more more hand-fitted, more detailed, all that stuff. Yeah, you know, we've, we talked a long time, and, and you and I have talked about this before, uh, and Colt is, for instance, has been pretty open about this. If we wanted a Python today, and they they had to make it like we remembered it being made, it would cost five, north of $5,000. We all know that. At least those of us that are in the industry know it. I don't think a lot of people really think that, but those of us that are in the industry that know what it costs to make a gun, you know, that's not an outrageous number. Um, so these coming in at $3,500 with complete adjustability with the action, with the uh, incredible accuracy because of the tension barrel, um, the pedigree, the durability, everything going for them, $3,500 and you, and you feel that action, that smooth, gorgeous action. You know, it's not a bad price point. It really isn't. When you start thinking about what you have to do to some other gun to get even halfway here. Uh, real quick, the user adjustability, I'm kind of curious about yeah. that. How was that accomplished? Because normally with something like that, we would send a gun like this to someone like right. you, and right. you would work on it. Now, how, how would the user, the end user, do that? Someone who is completely, I mean, they know, how, let's say they know how to take the side plate off a of Smith, and they can look at it and, and you know, kind of understand how it works, but that doesn't go any further than that. How do, how do you accomplish that adjustability? Okay, uh, there are three things that are adjustable easily by a non-technical user, and that's the rebound weight, so the rebound speed, the main spring weight, so the, the, the hammer weight, they can adjust that. The, the, uh, the screw for the rebound is here, the screw for the hammer weight is underneath the grip, 
and they can also adjust over travel on the trigger. Now, to adjust the let off in single and double action, you have to take the side plate off and you have to, the, the single action is actually fairly easy because there's actually an adjustment tool to do that. For the double action let off, you have to take the hammer out and exchange the roller bearings. So it's probably not something that most people are gonna do, but it's easily accomplished by realistically any gunsmith who has experience with working on really, quite frankly, any revolver, uh, because it's just a matter of pulling the hammer out, exchanging the roller bearing, and putting it back in. So it's relatively easy to do, and if if there's a, a person, an end user, a, you know, an owner, who's fairly competent, maybe doing like putting spring kits in and things like that, they could probably do that themselves. And the thing is, you know, we see all these, we've seen a few semi-autos from SIG and other manufacturers that have, have some user adjustability like that, but I don't think we've ever really seen that in a revolver. No, this is the, really this is the first time, and this is one of course hallmarks, you know, that was the, one of the big things about the cork design, the original Willie cork design, is that he wanted it to be adjustable. And so this is, you know, I can't really think of any gun, any revolver at least, any double action revolver, that has this level of adjustability at the user level. Um, I, I, to the, you know, as I'm thinking through all of the revolvers that I know of, I, I can't think of any other, because that was, again, that was one of the, the really unusual things about Willie Cork's design. And uh, finally, any idea, are these available now or they will, will be available later on? Or? The, uh, most of these are available very, very soon. Uh, the, I don't know if the shipment has actually made it in yet. So, since I, you know, I don't work for Core, if I, I'd have to find that out, or for Nighthawk. Um, I don't know if the shipment has actually made it in yet, but it is on the way, so they will be available shortly. Excellent. Well, thank you for chatting with us, and uh, where can people find more information? Uh, they can go to uh, Nighthawk website, which is nighthawkcustom.com, I believe. And if not, just Google Nighthawk Custom. You'll find it because they, they, and they've got them on the website. All the guns are on the website. MSRPs and everything should be there. So they're there. All righty. Well, thank you very much, Grant. Hey, you know, it's always fun getting together with you. Thanks for having me on.